All right, it's working so far. I'm fishing on English Lake, Manitowoc County, Wisconsin. We're looking for five perch for sure, and then we're going to be seeking larger bluegills and then large crappies at dark, or right after dark. This is about a seven inch, and I don't want to keep it, but I hooked it deep. That's what I want. <laughs> Here's a nice eight incher English Lake. That's I'll keep that one. We're getting out of here. I don't like the music. Just like that, we are in Carson's Lake. <laughs> oh, that music is nuts. So we'll see if I catch anything here. I've had good luck here in the past. But I've also had some bad days, so who knows. I'm going to be playing the wind. I'm going to go on, uh, there's a point up here that I think was getting hit by wind all day, right over there. Eight and a half inch Carson's Lake bluegill right there. <laughs> oh, I found him. <laughs> Another dandy. <laughs> Ooh, I got lucky. This is the biggest bluegill of the day, or of the night, right here. Here it is in the morning. Last night I caught these fish mostly on Carson Lake. And you can see the ice is still good. So we got a nice cold fish. Got ice in that gallon plastic water jug. And I'm going to clean them. A couple of real nice ones. Cold. I think get close to 8 inches. Okay. This is my unorthodox method of Cleaning a fish, most of it is standard. Everybody knows how to scale. So we're going to scale it first. I do use a serrated blade. This is just one I got from Fiskars. This is really old. I probably had it since the 90s. And that's how I scale. I like scaling fish. I mean, I see these guys, and I actually used one a couple weeks ago with the big stainless steel tubs you throw them in there and 20 minutes all the fish are scaled it was pretty nice I kinda liked it but I'm not gonna set one up because I like cleaning fish alright so this is standard cut them from the top Get it down to the tail section, and I stop. This is standard. I'm going to get around the gill plate there. Standard to open her up a little bit. Get her down to the rib cage, and now this is where I turn the fish around. So that's the unorthodox part. And you just follow that rib cage right down. Then there's a little bit of meat right after the rib cage I turn the knife down a little bit until I feel the backbone then right down the tail that is the bluegill fillet
you can see I got that little dollop of meat right there. I might have missed just a tiny bit right there. Then right down to the backbone. The rib cage and the backbone. Okay, now we'll do the other side. I like getting that way up there by the head. I had some acquaintances from from Poland on the internet back when I used to be on Facebook a lot. By the way, I just quit that cold turkey. Spending too much time on the internet is not healthy. That's what I determined. They said that they eat the fish heads. So you see I got down to the rib cage again. You hear, hear the knife? Listen. Now I'm right on the rib cage. Then I do the same thing here. I didn't have to flip it around though this time. And right down the tail. That's it. There are the flays in the bowl. And here are the rest of the fish that I have to do. I caught those last night and they've been on ice ever since. Nice and cold. We're going to have us a bluegill feast. Well, I call them eights, but they're seven and a halfs. That's what happens when you catch a lot of six inches. The seven and a halfs look like eights. <laughs> Still very nice bluegills. I'm gonna go in the house and I'm gonna show you how I prepare the bluegills. Look at that big pile of fish flesh. That's just 19 bluegills. Way more than a meal. So now I'm gonna let them dry off just a little bit, let them drip off, and I'm gonna show you the next step. I wiped out the bowl so that there's no moisture inside of it. I'm just taking these fillets, just touching this paper towel and putting them in. Now the first layer is all skin side down. the next step. I love salty fish. If you got enough potassium in your diet you don't have to worry about too much salt. Or at least I'm not going to worry about it. You do whatever you want. Okay now we're going to do the next step. Next layer. I'm going to do these all skin side down until the top. Well, the reason why I do this now is because I like frying them in, in uh, extra virgin olive oil. And when you have fish coming out of a water fillet, or a water marinade, I'm sorry, um, the water splatters the grease all over the place. And oftentimes I get little burn marks. So I started doing this a couple years ago and that actually stopped it. There's a, a crackle here and there, but I haven't had any spit up at me since I've been doing this method of marinade. More salt. Every layer gets salt. See if I can do this, I'll do this with my other hand so I can. Every layer gets salt. There. So on and so forth until they're all in a bowl. It all salted down and they should marinate for at least a day to get the full benefit of the salt. I think there's a little curing that happens as well. Oh, I can't wait.